Hi guys, I apologize for the quality of the video. It might be laggy in some parts of the video. I really do apologize. Uh, my computer is shit. Well, back to the video. Hi, today I'm going to share with you on how to use Git. Why? It's because I was looking at this website called dev.2. It is basically a blog website where developers put in tutorials or their thoughts on frameworks and technologies. So it has some beginner friendly tutorials that you can look up to. And this is what I have chance upon and I was thinking, why not create a video? So thank you for clicking on this video and let's begin. If you don't know what is Git, click on the link on top and the person really explain on what it is Git. In the summary, Git is basically a version history software that handles with the different versions of your project. Now that's how developers save or work on their project. In order for us to use Git, we have to use this command called git init. So let's do it in a repository that I'm currently working in. I'm inside Linktree demo, which is in the link on top. It is basically a very good beginner friendly tutorial that you can start. Once you're inside Linktree demo project, type in git init and this will initialize an empty git repository. One thing that you notice it is dot git, meaning it is hidden from view. All right, what I mean is that if you were to go to finder in Mac, you will not see the dot git file. But in order for you to do that for Mac users, you can press the command shift dot and you see all the hidden files that starts with the letter dot and this is where the git file is created for windows i'm not too sure you have to google it terribly sorry moving on in git we have the three different stages of working on a project first is working repository second is staging area and third is local repository repository is another word for folder meaning you're working on your project and then you're putting your changes inside the staging area and then save it inside your local folder. So I'm going to explain on these three different types of stages. The first stage is a working repository. So you are creating your own Linktree demo project and you have certain changes that you have. So your files look something like this. So you have a lot of changes, right? And now you want to add the changes inside the staging area area so what is the staging area before that let's add all our files inside the staging area there is this command called git status which shows you what files that are not inside the staging area now there's this uh suggestion that says use git add to track okay sure let's track it type in git add but we want to add all the files so in order to add all we need to type the word dot <laughs> not a word it's just a sign and this adds all of our files how do we know that let's type in git status and you can see all of our files in green that means it is in the staging area now why do we need to put our stuff inside the staging area very good question okay so you have the changed file and you want to put inside the staging area the staging area is just the middleman to a save project because in git you are handling with different versions of your project so sometimes you only want to change for example a certain screen file and then you put in the staging area and then sometimes like oh i also want to have other files to put it inside the staging area so the staging area allows you to save multiple files that you want to put in inside your project that's why it's called an area it can handle with more than one file change and sometimes you don't feel like these two files are not worthy You're unworthy of your title You're unworthy to be saved to have some things to work on it but this file is okay to be saved so then you just save this file into the staging area and then you will save it later on so the staging area is a very flexible you could say area for you to add or not add inside when you put inside the staging area it is not saved at all inside once we are done with putting all our files inside the staging area we want to seal it and saved it in a version of our project. So how do we do that? We use this git commit. So we will save our changes in our local repository or our local folder. So once we add everything inside, we have to type in git commit. Now the thing is right, git commit is just the action of sealing it. So we are licking the envelope with all our changes inside. And then 
an envelope usually contains a message so we have to put in a message because in a project we have many many different messages of the changes that we do we are going to type in initial commit if you were to type in a message make sure you type in a present tense it is just a standard of commit messages so you are going to commit the changes that describes as an initial commit press enter it will look something like this a bunch of stuff that means it is added into our changes and version and finally it will be saved inside the local repository or our local folder now if you will go to git status so let me git status there are nothing to commit that means we have saved our changes our first version of our link tree demo project in order for us to see the different versions we can type in git log and this will show what are the different versions that we have or the different commit and you can see here our message here initial commit which is pretty simple and this looks like the different versions of what we are going to do in the future so the first one will usually be a initial commit and then maybe next one do some changes and the next one do some changes and this hard shape represents the head or the latest version of our project that's why it says head here and what is this mark master word all right let me explain so this is called a branch all of these changes that are linked up right it is called a branch and the default branch that git usually create is called the master branch why the master branch is because yeah it's just a naming convention that git has initialized for us so in our master branch and in our head this is our commit and initial commit in our head is this commit that we just created or committed and in the future this initial commit we will have another version which is, called, which is called update packages let's do that imagine we have a change in our current project so we go to git status and we modified our pub spec yaml what we need to do first of all is we need to git add dot so we are adding all of our files that's not inside our staging area and if you go to git status our pub spec is inside our staging area now we like okay i'm going to confirm that this is the changes that i want so next up we're going to commit a message which is called update dependencies or oh, okay packages once we commit a message then it says here update packages as our commit and now it is pushed as our most updated commit if you go to git log you can see here update packages is now our head in our master branch pretty cool does that make sense hopefully it does <laughs> so like update packages and then you can try i mean if you want you can try removing min.dart and add min.dart but i would not recommend unless you know what to do but imagine in the future there will be different kind of commits in our master branch but the thing is what if our machine dies what if our laptops what if our desktops that we are working on dies because git only saves in our local machine or our current machine that we have so that's why we have remote repository Tree. remote repository mean we have a folder or a backup maybe in a cloud or in a server somewhere else that we can access through a url and these are the different services that you can search up so you can google git remote services so this is called bitbucket this is github and this is gitlab but we're going to use the most common one which is called github and github is basically a remote repository service that allows you to save and back up your folders or projects inside github and the thing is why we need a remote repository also is because we are also going to work together with other people so once your folders are inside a cloud or a server right other people can access to it so this will be probably in another tutorial but for now we are just going to focus on ourselves very important what we need to do is we need to save local repository into our remote repository how are we going to do that first of all we need to use github the github will look so something like this what you need to do is you need to create a new repository so you see here the word repository and the word new click on new now you need to name your repository so let's name it link tree underscore demo and after that let's create a repository can ignore all of this once you have created a link tree demo inside github there are certain instructions you can follow but the thing is we have an existing repository from our command line or from our flutter project so there's this two very simple commands that you need to add in inside your terminal so the first one git remote add origin what does that mean uh, 
What it means basically adds the address URL of the remote repository in your Git folder or file. In GitHub, there's tons of files that you can find, but you need to link it to the current URL that you have in your GitHub, which is this one. All right, so for example, oh, this is our remote repository. Okay, we're going to add it inside our local repository. So we are going to just copy the first one, git remote add origin, all right, and put it inside our terminal. Cool, so it adds inside, there's no error. I mean, suggestion should just put a, you know, a success message or something like that. The next one is git push dash u origin master. What does that mean? Now we have already add our address inside our link tree demo or, or your current project. Now we need to push push our master branch that we have earlier into our remote repository. How do we do that? So we use this command called git push dash u origin master. Git push means we are going to push our changes inside our remote repository. Dash u means we're going to do it upstream and then origin master meaning that we are going to push it on our remote repository. So we are going to set the default remote branch to our current local branch. What does dash u origin master mean? So we have our local master branch right we need to link it and then after that it will just copy a branch into this so in the future when we need to you know pull the changes from our remote repository into our local repository this command helps us in that manner so it's just the linking of the remote repository to our local repository so let's do that git push dash u origin master and it will have some loading here, right? So this means it is just pushing our branch into our master branch in our remote repository. Once you are done pushing it, right? How do you know that your GitHub project is updated with your local project? Is to go back to GitHub, refresh the page, and it will look something like this. Cool, right? Uh, yeah, you can see here, initial commit and update packages. So you can explore around on GitHub. One thing to take note is git push dash u origin master usually is used when you want to initialize a GitHub repo into your local repository. If you have any changes, then you have to do git push. So it pushes your changes into the remote repository because you already have linked it up previously Previously, you don't have to type in dash u origin master. Now, with git push, what if you have a change that you made locally? So you made a local change and then after that, the remote repository will actually be updated with it. So demonstration is, imagine if you have another change with our pub spec YAML again. <laughs> Because that's the easiest. What we need to do is we do the same thing. So we git add file git commit slash m update dependency because there's only one. And then the next step is to git push. And it will push in our master in our remote repository. Now if you go back to GitHub and we update. So you see here update packages. Now we are gonna refresh this and it will say update dependency. Awesome. And you see how long ago it will have updated this file. That's amazing. Once you have initialized in GitHub or your other remote repository services, right? This is basically the three commands that you need. So you need to add file. So and then you commit with the message of the changes and then you you push it so it will push in your local and also your remote all right so that's about it if you have any questions with git or github you can put any questions down below and i will be happy to assist you on it and that's about it give me a like if you understand it if you don't then just put it down on the comments down below because i really want to improve in my explanation subscribe for more uh, tutorials for beginners this tutorial is really meant for beginners uh, and it's really what i wish somebody have told me before and yeah thank you guys hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial have a nice day Bye bye